Thank you to uh, Hannah and uh, the team. Much appreciated. Um, my name's Mark. If, uh, if you've come in, I'm one of the elders here in the church. It's great to, to see you, and uh, welcome to those who've also come in during the worship. It's, uh, it's great to see you, and if you're on holiday, welcome to uh, the island. It's uh, displaying itself at its best the last couple of days, so uh, that's um, really good. Uh, a couple of notices. Those of you who are very, very attentive will have noticed there's a bit of a mistake in this week's news. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we are <coughs> gradually wanting to uh, open up things in all sorts of ways, um, and uh, we, we certainly want to get back to our prayer times and worship times uh, as a church, uh, bit by bit. So the first, we historically would have had uh, the first Monday of the month and the third Sunday uh, for a time of worship and really just waiting on God, the team leading us in worship and we're wanting to do that. But uh, like many people, I'm having a few days off um, over the next uh, uh, week or so. Um, and so next Monday, um, I'm not actually here, and I'd love to be here as we gather to, to pray together. So the news currently says Monday the 9th um, is actually Wednesday the 9th, all right? So, <laughs> um, but Monday's going forward, so... Um, Wednesday, Wednesday week, as it were, the 9th. We will be in here together. We'll lay out the chairs quite differently and um, we'll seek to, to follow guidelines. And, uh, but it will be good to be here together for a prayer time. And then the third Sunday going forward, we're going to worship together and <clears throat> take some time just to wait on God and hear from Him. So that's, that's all good. But please do take a note of what's in the weekly news sheet. I know many of you do. Um, and just keep uh, following that and, uh, and tracking that through. One of the things we just felt really prompted... Um, <coughs> thanks, my wife spots... Uh, <coughs> it's because we're not used to using our voices, are we? I should tell the story about what's written on here. So uh, thank you for those who were praying for my dad's Thanksgiving... Um, we started off at the committal at the crematorium and uh, Jackie walked in with this bottle of water into the crematorium and it says good vibes only on the <laughs> one of our daughters went mum, mum, you know, turn it around <laughs> my dad would have loved it he would have thought it was very funny but uh, anyway <laughs> um, we just uh, have really felt that over these weeks and we're just letting God lead us, let the Spirit lead us, that we want to lay foundations again, really, in this whole subject of life in the Spirit. What does it mean? We talk about being a, a church of the Word. We absolutely love the Word of God, and we talk about being a church of the Spirit. And we talk about life in the Spirit, and uh, we're just visiting, really, over some weeks, the subject of life in the Spirit. What does it look like? Um, and we're going to come at it from all sorts of different angles. So sometimes there'll be a bit of a repeat of things. Other times we'll, we'll just take it on a, on, a, on a bit of a journey and we'll go through some steps. So we're, it's this overarching theme of life in the Spirit. And there will be moments where we'll dig into the, the fine detail. But I was really struck as I, I loved what Ashley brought to us. But you will know that on our website um, you can track your way through into SoundCloud or to our YouTube um, but on our YouTube channel, the sermons are there, the talks are there, uh, and uh, just probably good to acknowledge um, uh, the, the people that are uh, just watching today. If you are watching uh, online um, uh, on our YouTube channel, you're very welcome. It's great to have you, and you're welcome to be here with us as well. But Ashley was bringing something last week that really caught my attention, and it was so, so it just had a depth to it. But he landed it last Sunday with this phrase. He, I'm just going to stop, as it were, where he finished with 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Um, and uh, he took us into the whole story of Moses going up the mountain with the veil on the face, which we've all become very aware of and understanding perhaps that much more than we might ever have done before. Um, but then he talks about us now as the people of God who have unveiled faces. And uh, 2 Corinthians 3, verse uh, 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, 
there is freedom. Amen. And we, who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. And where he really landed it with us last week was that that delight and joy of knowing the Spirit of God now in our lives, a Spirit, the Spirit of God who wants to take us on from glory to glory. And and it really, as I sat there last week, I thought, what does that mean to go from glory to glory? What does it mean to keep moving on in God? And as I was sitting there, a little tiny phrase that I've lived with for many years from the scripture, that something that I was really led into as someone who came from a background where the work and the person of the Spirit was, the Holy Spirit was there, uh, but it wasn't really referred to, and in fact, many ways, was, was preached against in terms of what we would know and love today. Um, the big word that I grew up with was dispensation or dispensational, that there was a time, there was a dispensation, there was a, a, a time when God was at work by his spirit in a particular way. But now, as the church had been planted, the, the apostles had done their work, the apostles had died, and we're now in a different dispensation, we're in a different time. But I came to realize and understand that the Spirit didn't leave. The Spirit, Jesus said, I will go on pouring out my Spirit. On and on and on pouring out my Spirit. And myself and many of you here in the room and many others as a, as a young teenager and growing and emerging, discovering that the life in the Spirit is for today. It's not somehow the church was planted and yes, we've got the Word of God and it's our highest authority and it's what we come to, but the Spirit transforms us. It's a transformative word as the Spirit applies the Word of God to us. As we were praying, the Spirit brings a revelation, and a verse that I was taken to and and began to understand is from Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4. And uh, I'm going to read a whole section, but... uh, the, the verse, I'll, I'll allude to it, is actually, in, sorry, is in Ephesians 5. I'm going to start in 4. Um, I'm being very brave today. I uh, can't challenge someone to have less notes unless I'm prepared to have less notes myself. <laughs> so I've still got three post-it notes in my Bible, right? I'm just being really honest, but I haven't got three pages. Okay. So, all right. So we've got a thing going here, anyway. Um, the verse that I'll come back to, this is the core verse. As I sat there last week, as as Ashley was reading from Corinthians about from glory to glory, the verse that came to my mind was Ephesians 5, 18. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. And I want to uh, unpack that. But let me read the context of that verse. We have to go back to the previous chapter, chapter 4, and I'm going to start at verse 17 in the NIV. It's entitled, Living as Children of Light. So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. You, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him, And were taught in him accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its sinful desires, and to be made new in the attitude of your minds, to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, For we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not let sin 
Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. Do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with his own hands that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for the building up of others according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ forgave you. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which is out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a man is an idolater, puts other things before God, has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness and truth. Find out what pleases the Lord. There's a good verse. Take a verse away. Find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. Rather expose them, for it's shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. Everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for it is light that makes everything visible. That's why it's said, wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Lord, we just recognize the power of your word the authority of your word, the truth of your word. And we also thank you for the life that is in your word. And we ask today, Holy Spirit, would you bring to life your word? Help us to understand, to receive truth, not just in our heads, in our intellects, but in our inner spirits, inner man, inner woman that we might know and understand and walk in your ways, because we ask it in your precious name. Amen. So there's some strong challenges there, aren't there? Strong, strong challenges. I, I just went through some of those, uh, those verses. <clears throat> Must no longer, put off, to be made new, um, put on, put off, <laughs> do not sin. Do not let anger, uh, the sun go down in your head. Do not, must steal no longer. Do not grieve. Get rid of, be kind. Phew. (laughs) Be imitators. Live a life of love. Must not, nor should. Rather, thanksgiving. Let no one, do not, once darkness, but now, live as 
find out. Have nothing. Be very careful. Do not. Do not. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. And the thing that I was taught, came to understand, um, is that it's written in a particular way in the Greek. There is a joke here, I'm sure Greg would tell it. He would say, I know a little Greek, he runs a kebab shop down the road. Um, That's your kind of joke, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, see, I told you it's his kind of joke. But uh, he actually knows a bit more than that Greek, I think. But, um, but it's important at times, it really is, to understand the hermeneutic of the Bible. How it was written, why it was written, who it was written for, and, and what's being said there. And what we need to understand with that little verse there in Ephesians 5, some of you may have heard this before, verse 18, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. And in the original, it's written there in the present, the now, and the continuous, ongoing. Uh, The reason it's not written out in English, because it doesn't sound in English, it doesn't read well in English. But if we were to read it, what we would read (coughs) is, be being filled. Be being filled. Now and continuously. Because you read all those verses and you go, oh my goodness, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, mustn't do this, must do that. How am I ever going to live this life? One of the things about new believers, and, I, and I, we are aware of this sometimes, that some of us will remember we grew up in a generation and a time, and I've talked about this now, I often think about it when I'm preaching with jeans on, is that I grew up in a church, and I've said this before, you weren't even allowed to go to church, let alone the preacher wear jeans. Um, I can remember my youth, members of my youth group being sent home because they were wearing jeans. I mean, when I think about it now, I mean, talk about having open arms to anybody to come into church. But we can so easily, the Bible is very strong, the Bible is very clear, and 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 it's bringing us these truths to bring us to life. There are reasons why do not. There's reasons why we're being exhorted strongly to to begin to bring changes to being in our life. But you can can find yourself, how am I ever going to do this? How am I going to ever live this way? It's very clear. Do not, I mean, I used to love as a kid when I discovered this word debauchery. It's a wonderful word, isn't it? What what does it mean? (laughs) And then you look it up and you go, ooh, okay. (laughs) Okay. You know, do not get drunk on wine. But there's a sense here of there are things that will lead us away from God. There are things that, you know, I I don't, well, I shouldn't really get into it too strongly, but I, I don't believe that the Bible teaches against drinking alcohol per se. What it's talking about is be aware, be warned of those things that will fill you, consume you, and take your vision and your gaze away from the Lord. Be aware, be, 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 be aware, be warned of people. There are people listed in here, the types of people. There are choices that we have to make sometimes. You know, I'm sorry, I can't any longer be around that person. They are not good for me. Now that's hard. I believe God calls us to be around those who are not like us. But there are moments, there are times where I know that if I spend some time with that person, we're just going to gossip. That's all we're going to do. We're just going to start gossiping. And I don't know if I've got control of my tongue at the moment. So what is better is that I don't spend time with that person, at least for a season. So there are people here to remove ourselves from. There are situations to take ourselves away from. I mean, there are other verses, aren't there, that talk about cut off, chop off. If it causes you to sin, chop it off. Again, I remember as a little boy thinking, literally, is that what's supposed to happen? But there's a strongness about it, isn't there? There's a strength about it. We need to deal with this. And you think, how? How am I, how am I ever, ever going to do this? How, how am I... 
possibly ever going to live this way. I can't. And, and even today, right, I've done this one and this one. Oh, no, but I failed on that one. Oh, look, I got that one right. But, oh, yeah, Jackie's just pointed out to me uh, that I've done that again. No, she's, she's wonderful. <laughs> she's wonderful. We need, we need, everyone needs a Jackie in their life. It's wonderful to have my youngest daughter and my new son-in-law in the church, by the way. Lockdown wedding. Yeah. Look, they're still holding hands and everything. So. <laughs> no, we still hold hands, don't we? 37 years and we still hold hands. It's nice not having notes, isn't it? The only thing you've got to keep an eye on the clock, that's the only thing. Yeah. <laughs> what was I saying? Yes. Thank you. How am I going to do it? How am I going to do it? Be filled with the Spirit. Instead, I've circled. Some people don't mark their Bibles. I mark my Bible a lot. Um, I just circle things and I, I round them. And Instead, I've circled it. Instead. Have you got the ESV there? What, what, what in, what's, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. What's the word in the ESV? But. Okay. Yeah. Dad, Dad just said but in church. Dad just said but. You said but. But, 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 but. <laughs> Be filled. Be being filled is the actual context. Be filled. Be being filled. I want to say something about this. Because I I sat there and I thought about this and I thought, what does that mean? I I know it's such a key verse for me ever since I was in my early 20s right through to here I am now in my early 30s. But, um, uh, you know, all these years... (laughs) I'm feeling very funny today. Um, All these years, I know, but what does it mean? What does it mean to you? Be being filled. What does that mean? Be being filled. Just whisper to the person next to you if you want to. What What does it mean to you? Be being filled. It's a position thing, isn't it? It's an attitude thing. It's a heart thing. It's, it's not static. It's dynamic. When we were learning about the things of the Spirit, and I thank God for my mum and dad, and we've been obviously reflecting on that quite a lot as a family in, in recent days, but I was, I was thinking in those early days as we tried to teach and they tried to teach and different ones tried to teach us about life in the Spirit and the things of the Spirit. But one of the things often was the picture that was used back back in the day was of a cup and the cup being filled up. The thing about the cup is that when a cup gets filled up with water, and, you know, and then people would say, and, and it is a helpful illustration, but I, I think it's, it's also a bit of a weak illustration, because they would say, well, you know, the cup gets knocked through life. Do you remember, do you remember that picture? You've heard that picture before? The cup gets knocked through life, and, and it needs filling again. And we'd say that. But there's something about a cup. Once you've filled it, it sits on the table. It's very static. It's almost like, oh, I've got to be careful with the cup now, lest I spill. But I think what we've come to realize and understand, and living here um, is so helpful, um, and this afternoon as you're out and about and looking around, you might remember this. I think what is a stronger and more dynamic picture is is one of a sail. Of this bee being filled is of the sail. I was watching a, a big yacht that was very close to shore yesterday and discovered, I realized why, it's because people were taking photos of it. It had come in quite close to shore. In fact, I was half washing because I thought it was going to get grounded. You know, it was going to be quite novel. But it, it just about, it was a big yacht, but it was close to the cows going to shore there. But 
the, the, the foresail, forgive me, I'm not big on the technical, but the big sail at the front, it wasn't the spinnaker, but it was the foresail, but it was flapping a bit because they were trying to be close into shore to pose, uh, but they were also trying to, uh, the, the wind was slightly more easterly than it is the normal prevailing southwesterly, as you know, but it, it was sort of coming the other way, and it was, it, this sail was moving a bit backwards and forwards, and you could see the guy trying to adjust, in fact, he wasn't doing that, it was that big, he had one of them, um, but he, he was adjusting, and you could see, and as he adjusted, snap, you could hear it. You know that, 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 that wonderful sound? Just this, this flapping and fluttering, and he adjusts it, and then snap, and the whole sail catches. And that, that I think, is, that is what be being filled. But it's dynamic. It's dynamic. It's like, okay, Lord, I've told the story before, but as a teenager, I wanted more of the Spirit, nobody to talk to, couldn't, didn't feel at the time I could talk to my mum and dad. I'm reading <clears throat> 9 o'clock in the morning, Dennis and Rita Bennett. I'm sat and I get to the page, whatever, uh, about being filled with the Spirit and speaking in spiritual languages. And I sat on the edge of my bed, literally, and went like this. <laughs> I mean, thank the Lord no one else saw me. <laughs> except I now tell everyone about it. But it, that sense of, well, I want what you've got, Lord, so put it in me. Now, I believe in the laying on of hands, and I, I can't wait until we're able to do that much more, much more than we are just right now at the moment. And, and so I believe in impartation, and that's a conversation, a sermon for another day. I believe that God does put things into us as we bless one another and pray for one another. But I came to understand by talking to a, a friend who was a little bit further down the road than to me. He said, you need to practice. I said, Practice? You've either got it or you haven't. You know, what, what do you mean practice? Well, of course, we've got at least one general practitioner here in the room. You don't think when you go to see the doctor, oh, she practices. <laughs> you know, practice, she, she either knows what she's talking about or she doesn't. But she's learning all the time, I presume. <laughs> There's a sense of we're learning all the time. There are new things. Some of you may or may not be into Call the Midwife. We, we've watched it for years. But one of the things I find fascinating about Call the Midwife is the way they mark history. You've got the 1930s, 1940s. Currently, it's in the 60s. But things are being discovered by the doctor who's in Call the Midwife. Things that people didn't know about. I went to college with someone who only had a very short arm and so on, and thalidomide. But uh, I think last season in Call the Midwife, the whole discovery of thalidomide and so on. And this friend said to me, you need to practice. And I said, what do you mean practice? He said, it's about orientating yourself. It's about thinking. It's about pursuing. It's about saying, Lord, I want to be filled. And such as I know right now, I'm going to walk in that. I'm going to walk in that. I'm going to be being filled. I'm going to choose. I'd begun, I, I had a couple of words in the spiritual language there were a couple of unusual words. I knew they were from God, but he said, begin to use those. And I found myself, as it were, be, I'm saying, I want to be filled, Lord, with the Spirit. And so I would, I would pray in this new language for five minutes each day. And then it became ten minutes. Not emptying my mind, but filling my mind with the Lord Jesus. Filling my mind with his word. I thank you, Lord, for the revelation that you've given to me. Your might, your power, your glory. Until one day, I gave myself the challenge of praying in the Spirit for a whole day. The Bible talks about praying unceasing. There's a choice, there's a decision. The sail, I, I need to orientate my sail. Not just a cup that needs to be filled up. Right, it's full now. Right, I'm going to try and keep the cup full. No. Be being filled. Let the sail, orientate the sail. What does that mean? I've got a challenging meeting that's coming up tomorrow in the workplace. What does it mean to be being filled? I'm going to bring it to the Lord. I'm going to bring it to the Lord. I'm going to chat to the Lord about it. I'm going to talk to him about it. I'm going to say, 
peacemaker, peace bringer, fragrance bringer, come to me. Fill me. Bank holiday, family connections, other dynamics. Lord, fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. Be being filled. We could talk about this for a long time. If This is one of those moments where we could break into groups, we could turn to one. What does that mean for you? It's a choice. It's a, it's a decision. I just want to say this. <clears throat> if, you, if you pick up... Um, like your concordance, the, you know, the, the words in the back of the Bible here that list all the different words, or if you put into your Bible app, put in the word filled. Oh, I'm not going to do it now. I did look it up. But it, it talks about being filled, and there's lots of filled with love, filled with joy, filled with the Spirit. And that there's many things, filled. Be being filled. I want to ask the question... Filled with what? Filled with what? Verse 8 of chapter 5. You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. Live as children of light. There are choices. There are decisions. There are moments. I could gossip. I could pull down the government or I could pray for the government. I'm not saying we shouldn't hold the government to account. What I'm saying is live as children of light. What does it mean to be children of light in our generation? What does it mean to be a church that's flooded with light? What's it going to mean for more and more guests and visitors who are going to come through the door? Uh, I just want to speak directly to those who consider yourself to be a regular Apex member. I want to say to you, I believe, Ashley and I believe, God is going to bring people into this building, but also into our connection, in, into our spheres of influence in the days to come. I absolutely believe it. How are we going to receive people? What's our attitude? Live as children of light. How am I going to live as a child of light? Be being filled. Filled and filled again. Praying in the Spirit on all occasions. Singing to one another. Making music in our hearts. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. Everything. You know, what we put in makes a significant difference. Some have been commenting on the fact that I have changed shape somewhat, (laughs) changed size. Um, It's because I've stopped putting one type of thing in. Um, I was received a diagnosis. Not that I was particularly massively overweight, but I did receive a diagnosis of, of type 2 diabetes. And so I've begun to cut out the carbs and cut out the sugars. And it it made a difference. It's made a difference to the charts and the figures and the numbers. Huge difference. And I trust in in God's grace that it's making medically a, a difference. I believe it will do. But what you put in makes a difference. <clears throat> what you feed yourself on what you think about, what you watch. What, so be being filled with the Spirit. And these verses here, all of these verses that I read, not to go back through all of them, but all the verses that we've been reading there, they're all part of this be being filled. So the unwholesomeness of your speech, the attitude of your heart, what you do with anger, who you mix with, the way you live, who you're listening to, get rid of, no longer. Get rid of what? Bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, along with every form of of malice. There There are things to be removed and there are things to be being filled with. Be filled with the love of God. Be filled with the Spirit. Welcome the river of life. Welcome the wind of God going to pray any second (laughs) just can feel god wants to just come and help us in this right now want to finish in fact yeah john 7 john 7 very very famous 
One good thing about not having notes is you don't feel like, I must do the, do the notes. <laughs> Holy Spirit, just lead us now. Just lead us. Three, good, just 15 minutes now. I hope this has been helpful for you this morning. John 7. Let me do, I've done this little story before, let me do it again. Just maybe close your eyes. It's the great feast. Great feast. The great temple. Great feast. Many people. Many, many people. On the floor of the temple, there are channels. I don't know yet what they're for, these channels, but many, many people sitting on the floor in amongst these channels. There are channels. They lead towards the altar. And the priests pick up these huge stone jars, very similar to the ones that Jesus told them to fill for the wedding and it turned into wine. Big, big Roman amphora kind of jars. You can imagine them. And the procession goes down to the river. The jars are plunged into the river. They're filled up. These are heavy. They progress, process up the hill slowly. Jars still dripping. Carrying these great jars up to the temple. As they come into the temple, they they pour, they begin to pour this water. You can hear it glugging and splashing over the altar area, down onto the ground, and it's running through the channels, running through between the people. And as part of the feast, people are reminded of Moses striking the rock and water gushed out of the rock and there's silence as as the water and the fresh water comes along the bits of dust and bits of straw and other bits and pieces are are being pushed by jar after jar is being poured and the water is being poured you can hear it splashing and on this last and greatest day of the feast Jesus stands up probably towards the back somewhere on the edge And in a loud voice, he says, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this, he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not yet been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. On hearing his words, some of the people said, surely this man is a prophet. Others said, he is the Christ. He is the Christ. He is the Christ. Anyone thirsty? Thirsty today? Be being filled. Be filled. Think about the woman at the well. He wasn't actually talking about physical thirst. If only you knew who it was who'd asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Living water, springing up to eternal life.